You modeled a steady state mechanically refrigerated gas processing unit, and then you created pin ID by adding all the control logics. Are you confident your closed refrigeration loop is going to work as you expect? The best way to verify your control logic is to build a dynamic simulation. This particular model is built in VMG Sim Dynamic. As you see, natural gas first goes to the gas gas exchanger, then gas liquid exchanger, and then it is finally chilled down to negative 23.3 Fahrenheit in the chiller. The liquid NGL is extracted at the bottom of the cold separator, and then it is sent to the tank after the cold is recovered in the gas liquid exchanger. While the vapor goes to the pipeline after the cold is, is recovered in the gas gas heat exchanger. The refrigerant in the chiller is vaporized and then sent to the first stage of the compressor. After combining the vapor from the economizer, it is further compressed in the second stage. After it is fully condensed in the air condenser, it is sent to the receiver. Before it goes to the econo economizer, the liquid is throttling into vapor and liquid. The vapor portion feeds the second stage compressor while the liquid is further throttled to feed the chiller. Since we have a compressor, do you think we need to control the compressor discharge pressure? No, the compressor discharge pressure is actually determined by the condenser and the air temperature. Since we have a receiver, do you think we need to have a liquid level controller on the receiver? No, we actually control the liquid level in the, in the economizer and in the chiller. Since the total mass in the refrigeration loop remains the same, the liquid level in the receiver is going to be whatever it is. For this particular project, we have a total of five controllers. First, we need to have a liquid level controller to control the cold separator liquid level by adjusting the valve at the outlet of the cold separator. Second, we need to have a liquid level controller in the chiller by adjusting the valve in front of the chiller. Third, we also need to have a controller to control the temperature, cold separator temperature, by adjusting either the speed or IGV or slide valve of the compressor. And fourth, we need to have a pressure controller in the economizer and a liquid level controller in the econom economizer. Currently, the five controllers are in automatic mode and they are very stable. Can I save some energy on the compressor? Currently, the power consumption is about 594 horsepower. Let me try to set uh, the economizer pressure to 70 psi. It seems I did not save the power consumption. Instead, I increased the power consumption to about 604 horsepower. That is a bad idea. The current cold separator temperature is about negative 23.3 Fahrenheit. What is the lowest possible cold separator temperature? Right now, the compressor is running at about 65%. How about we increase to 100% and see what's going to happen? The cold separate temperature starts to drop. And finally, it dropped to about negative 26.4 Fahrenheit. And the power consumption increased to about 670 horsepower. With dynamic simulation, you can test out all your control ideas before they fail on site and it cost a lot of time and money. What's more, you can even virtually optimize your plant operation and save some operating cost while still achieve the same products thanks to VMG Sim Dynamic Simulation software. Thanks for watching this video. It is brought to you by Guofu Chen. More interesting topics can be found at showcase.guofuchen.com.